Hello and happy new year. So I'm sure we can all agree that uh, we hope that 2021 is going to be quite a lot different from 2020. But anyway, let's let's think about the time of year and you know making New Year's resolutions, making New Year harmonica resolutions. And with that in mind, I thought it would be a good idea to uh, go through eight mistakes that I see all harmonica players making. Okay, so I'm gonna have a sip of coffee and then we'll get started. Okay, mistake number one is not putting the harmonica down. Okay, so when you start to learn a new lick, uh, I'm sure you get really excited about learning that lick and you'll try and play along with the original as soon as you start working on it. Whereas what you should be doing is you should put the harmonica down. I know this feels very counterintuitive, but you should put the harmonica down and listen. And the more that you listen, the easier you'll find it to learn it and the more accurately you will learn it. Um, I was chatting to David Barrett about this and he has this great rule, which is listen once, play once. Uh, and I would eat, go even further and say, before you play at all, listen at least 10 times to the lick. And then you'll start to get it in your mind and you'll learn it a lot faster. I know it's not as exciting as grabbing your harmonica, but trust me, it will get you there a lot quicker. Mistake number two, noodling versus practice, okay? I'm sure that you have a, a, a few things that you really enjoy playing on the harmonica and as soon as you grab a harmonica, that's, that's what comes out and you just, you just noodle and you, may, you might wail, wail on the four draw, whatever it is that's, that you really enjoy doing. And that's, that's fine, but you're not going to improve if you do that. So make it into a proper practice session, give yourself some kind of rhythmic context put a metronome on, or put a backing track on, and start thinking about what you're doing. So if you're playing with a metronome, think about locking in with that pulse. If you're playing with the backing track, think about following those changes. Think about the one, four, and five chords. Okay, mistake number three, taking it too seriously. I have heard so many grown-up students say, I'm giving up, I'm nowhere near as good as I wanted to be. And I always ask them, do you, do you enjoy playing? And they say, oh yes, I love playing. It's my favorite thing in the whole world. So why are you stopping? It's like, well, I'm not as good as this player or this player or that player. I say, like, who cares? Do you enjoy doing it? Yes or no? If you enjoy doing it, keep doing it. Don't take it so seriously. I know I'm a teacher and I'm always gonna make people work hard and practice and, and try and get them to get better. But at the end of the day, you've got to remember what the verb is for doing music. The verb is play. So remember, it's not always about hard work. It is sometimes, but it's not always. So don't take it so seriously and don't compare yourself to others. Mistake number four, not playing different keys. If you're one of those people who shies away from the high keys, like the, the high F or E, because you think it sounds too shrill, well, you are wrong. You should be playing the whole range of harmonicas, not just your favorite ones down at the low end that sound nice and fat. You need to get used to playing those ones that are higher and maybe sound a little bit too shrill. And the reason for that is twofold. Firstly, being able to jump between different keys will make you a much better player overall because you'll learn how to control your bends better, your breathing, your note accuracy, and you'll learn the idiosyncrasies of every single key. The second reason to play those higher key harmonicas is why, while they don't sound great by themselves, they sound absolutely fantastic in the context of a band. If you're playing with a band, you might have a bassist, a drummer, a keyboard player, a guitarist, and those instruments are all generally lower in the frequency range than the harmonica. So they're, they're filling out the bottom end of the, of the sound. 
So if you grab your harmonica that's a high key, like an F, it'll really cut through the band and sound brilliant. So what sounded shrill by itself sounds sweet in the context of, of a full group. Mistake number five, forgetting about the hands. Now we get so hung up on uh, technique around playing clean single notes, bending, vibrato, glissandos, everything that's on the harmonica, that we forget that a huge, huge part of the tone comes from your hands. And if you don't practice using your hands properly, then you're not gonna magically get great cut sounds and great hand wire. So you gotta spend time, just as you do with everything else that you practice, practicing using your hands, practicing getting a good seal around the harmonica, and practicing opening it in time and musically and getting those wonderful vocalizations that you can get with your hands. Okay, mistake number six, buying new gear to fix problems. Now this might come as a surprise to you, but if you rush out and buy the exact same pedal board setup as Jason Ritchie, you're not going to sound like Jason Ritchie. And I can guarantee you that if Jason Ritchie came and played through whatever gear you're using, he would sound like Jason Ritchie. So don't go around buying tons and tons of gear because you think it's going to make you a better harmonica player. It's not. The things that are going to make you a better harmonica player are thinking about being musical, listening, practicing, and playing with other musicians. And finally, around that idea, get the best out of the gear that you have. A lot of people think that if they buy just a new microphone and a new amplifier, they'll suddenly great, get great tone. But the great tone, 80% of it is from how you cup the microphone and, and how you play, how hard you play, how softly you play. So if you get that down, then the microphone adds that little sprinkle of fairy dust on top, but it's not gonna magically give you that 80% of good tone. Mistake number seven, ignoring the rhythm until later. So if you're one of these people who takes a lick that they want to learn or a tune that they want to learn and says, okay, I'm going to learn all the notes first of all, and uh, then, then afterwards I'll learn the rhythm. Well, you are wrong. The notes are the least important part of anything in blues harmonica. The first and foremost thing you need to be thinking about is the rhythm of what you're learning. So much so that what I would suggest going back to listening before you start trying to learn something is while you're listening to a lick or a song that you want to play, start tapping out the rhythm with your hands and start thinking about where the pulse is with your foot. So tap in time on the beat and really think about that before you start trying to work out what the notes are, before you start trying to play the notes. Rhythm comes first. And I can guarantee you that if you play the wrong notes, but the right rhythm, it's gonna sound a hell of a lot better than if you play the right notes with the wrong rhythm. I promise you, I really do. Mistake number eight, not trusting your ears. So a lot of students of mine uh, get really confused when I give them a piece of music to learn that doesn't follow the root notes of the one, four, and five chord over a 12 bar blues. And they'll say, well, Tomlin, why, why isn't there a two drawer over the one chord? Why isn't there a four blow over the four chord? Why isn't there a four drawer over the five chord? And I say, well, does it sound good? And they say, yeah, cool. That's all you need to know. The rules that you learn at the beginning are not hard and fast rules. They're just ways to get you playing more easily when you are a beginner. Playing root notes over chord changes is the easiest way to sound like you know what you're doing. But if something sounds good and it's not a root note, then it's, it's good, you know? Uh, and I would say that you should start playing around with all the notes in the blues scale over each of the chords and listen to what they sound like. And then try playing some notes that are outside of the blues scale and see if there's other stuff that sounds good. It might not be part of a scale, it might not be a root note, but it might sound good. So trust your ears. Your ears are your best friends and you really need to trust them and help to develop them. Okay, thank you so much for, uh, for taking the time to watch through these, these eight mistakes. Uh, I just wanted to say that if 
you're kind of wanting to, to make sure that you're starting on the best foot and not getting into bad habits when you practice harmonica and learn harmonica, then you should check out my absolutely free four week foundation course for blues harmonica players. Uh, it's completely free. It's a curriculum with everything that you need to start in the best possible way how to hold the harmonica, how to breathe properly, how to single out notes, how to get good tone, uh, how to play rhythmically and solidly. Uh, it's, it's everything you need to get started. So if you wanna check that out, just click on the link in the description below. But before you do that, you can do a little something for me. If you've enjoyed this lesson, please give me a thumbs up by hitting the like button below. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, then click on the little subscribe button and hit that little bell icon next to it so you get notified every time I put out a new harmonica video, which is every week. All right, thank you so much once again, and I will see you very soon. Happy harping. Oh. <laughs>